Hi and welcome to SQL TV. This time we are talking about um, the, the SQL of transaction video from the last week. So last week we clarified what a transaction is and what um, concurrency or concurrency models basically are. So this time we are talking about the properties of a transaction and also about the transaction phenomena. So um, every transaction, uh, by the way, if you don't know what a transaction is, please watch the other video to, you really need it for uh, this session. Um, every transaction fulfills the four uh, properties called the asset properties. So what are, for which stands asset actually? So asset stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. Uh, all of those four uh, set uh, properties are uh, important and every transaction fulfills those properties. So let's look one by one on each of those um, properties. To clarify each of the four asset properties, uh, let's just have a look at this uh, sample transaction, which is not regular T-SQL code, of course, but it is just for clarification. So we have a transaction here that puts $1,000 on my saving accounts and it takes the $1,000 from my regular account and then we commit the transaction. So a regular trans uh, money transfer uh, w between two uh, accounts. So let's, like, let's, let's look at the first of the properties, uh, atomicity. So atomicity means that all of the statements within a transaction go through either or they don't go through. So that means we cannot have only this statement go through the put and we don't, ha we don't have the remove go through. So either everything goes through or everything fails. If one of those um, statements would fail and everything uh, in this never actually happened to the database. It is called a rollback then. Um, this is for the atomicity. Then we have, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, jump uh, to, uh, not consistency, because this is uh, the last one I want to talk about. Let's jump to um, isolation. So isolation means that every transaction does its thing on its own and no other transaction can actually interfere or uh, communicate or also read or write data, access uh, all of the actions that happen within a transaction. So every transaction itself is isolated from all the other transactions. Um, this means that uh, when I put the money here, I can't already see the result on with another transaction on the sa on the savings account. And the same is for removing. I just can see it uh, when I when this transaction was committed. So every transaction can only see the results after this transaction committed its uh, process and its uh, actions, leading to the uh, to the uh, third. One that is durability, this means that uh, whenever a power fail or a crash on a server or whatever happens, that my data is not lost. That means if I execute these transactions and I uh, am done with the put $1,000 on the savings accounts and my computer crashes or the server crashes, network crashes, whatever, um, I can be sure whenever the database is up and running again that this will never have happened. This will be rollbacked uh, when the server comes up again because it was not commit when the crash happened. And also the, uh, the exact uh, opposite um, behavior that when I just committed the data and then the crash happens, I have to be sure that this is in the database when it comes up again. So when the commit comes, I really have to be sure that data is uh, in the database files, that data is flushed also on disk, that everything is really um, done and finished so that I uh, can rely on uh, this that when the uh, database comes up again my committed transactions are really still there and all of those three uh, atomicity isolation and durability leads into the consistency one that my database set is always consistent meaning I can't have uh, $1,000 coming up out of nowhere on my savings account and, and the database is fine with it. No, it can't happen. It has to be rollbacked or it has to do also this transaction. Otherwise, it can't happen. All of the three basically leads to the consistency that my database is always consistent. And of course, uh, you don't want to have an inconsistent database. If anything, any transaction would violate the uh, asset rules, then we would have a big problem uh, con uh, maintaining our DBMS system. So now that we know uh, the four asset properties and we know what a transaction actually is, we want to have a look at, um, yeah, I don't want to call them transaction problems or problems of transaction, I want to call them uh, transaction phenomena. So we have many phenomena 
that um, yeah appear depending on how my database is set up and what I want and we need to know all of them in, able to, in order to make sure um, yeah to what database uh, as transaction isolation level we want to have so the first one we want to talk about is the lost update problem uh, or the lost update phenomenon it is like this that um, this happens when two processes at the same time read data from the same cell or source or row then they update the value internally for uh, but differently and then they write back their updated value at the same time or almost at the same time um, so that one process overrides the update of another process example we have two clerks and they receive shipments of widgets and they keep track on um, how many widgets we have. So the number of widgets, let, be fifth, let it be 50. At the same time, clerk, one, uh, clerk A and B look into the, uh, into the basket or whatever and see, okay, we have 50 widgets on their, their list. Clerk A gets another 25 at the same time and clerk B gets another 45 at the same time. So clerk A just counts 50 plus 25 is 75, uh, 50 plus 45 equals 95. So now they write this back to the list. But let's say clerk A does a little bit before clerk uh, B. Clerk A writes 75. Now clerk B writes 95. So then 75 is the lost update here because uh, they didn't uh, yeah, rely on each other, they didn't wait for each other, they just uh, overrode their actions. This is called the lost update problem. I just want to clarify here that the SQL Server does not allow this behavior. If you have this behavior, you really have an application that implicitly uh, had this uh, program. Because if you use an update statement, you have the update log already on the table. Um, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, eliminating this uh, this whole lost update uh, problem. Okay, let's come to the next one. This is called the dirty read or dirty reads. So uh, actually I own a website called uh, www.dirtyread.de where I have um, yeah, a, a section where I actually explain it uh, textually. So please have a look at it. I also have it in the description below. But for the video I want to show you also an example for this. So this is an example for a dirty read. A dirty read actually means you read transaction A reads a value or read something from transaction B that is not committed yet. Here we have the left transaction updates a value quantity on table A and did not commit it yet and meanwhile a second transaction reads the value quantity from the uh, table A and it may read the 10 when you have a dirty read here then it is the 10 is the dirty read because the data was not committed yet. So in the end maybe this transaction here roll, does a rollback and this 10 actually was never a consistency, uh, consistent logical state of the database. It never existed in the first place since this transaction never wrote it really into the database. It was just a temporary value that was not written into the database. But still this transaction would have read it. This would be a dirty read and um, dirty because it was not committed yet. Next one is called non-repeatable reads. It means a transaction reads data with a certain query at least twice in the transaction, in the same transaction and receives different data for it. I just want to show you a quick example of this also. Okay, so we have two transactions again. The first one is selecting all quantities from A and this does this twice and in between the uh, second transaction update A sets quantity to 20 where quantity equals equal 10. So what will happen is of course only if uh, we have a quantity 10 before this um, we will select somewhere a row with a quantity 10 and within the same transaction we receive here a 20 for it so we did uh, read twice or repeat it uh, but we did not get the same result uh, we get different results in terms of values of the result and this is this phenomenon called non repeated reads because I can't uh, repeat my reads obviously because uh, somebody uh, changed it in between another transaction before everything was uh, committed here. So uh, this is also a phenomenon can happen and it leads us to the la last uh, of the phenomenon that is called a phantom or a phantom read. Okay, a phantom read means uh, there have to be, has to be a, a predicate uh, included, for instance, uh, in a where clause that, uh, where clause that, limited, that limits somehow my uh, result set. And we do the same query twice in the, in the transaction and we receive different number of rows. So this may sound similar to the uh, non-repeatable reads, 
but in non-repeated reads it was not about the row numbers it was about the values of the result set and here it's just about the row numbers that are different okay this, this is a different problem so for instance we have a transaction here that selects all quantities from our table a um, where quantity is less than 10 and it does this here again and in between we update and set the quantity to 11 where the quantity was 9. So obviously all rows that were displayed here with quantity equals 9 are not displayed here anymore. So the number of rows uh, shrinked and is less here. And this is the problem of the phantom or the phantom read problem. So actually those were all of the problems uh, we have for transactions and with one of them that is the last update not can actually happen in SQL Server but all of the others can happen depending on how your transaction isolation level is. And this will be topic for the next session, the next week. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please stay tuned for next episode when we're talking about transaction isolation level and leave comments and as feedback and follow me on Twitter. Uh, spread this video, share it with your colleagues and I hope to see you next week again. Bye!